the universe's genesis might be a cosmic fabrication. A new theory dares to question the ultimate origin, suggesting that the Big Bang wasn't the starting gun. Here's the thing about the universe. We thought we had it figured out. A solid theory that explained everything. And then the James Webb Space Telescope turned on. Almost immediately, it started finding galaxies that break the timeline. Massive, mature galaxies showing up way too early. Like finding a fully grown forest before anyone planted the seeds. That doesn't work. But the galaxies are there. Okay, so maybe the timeline is off. Except the universe is also expanding at two different speeds depending on how you measure it. And there are structures out there too big to exist. The numbers don't add up. And the more scientists look, the more cracks appear. Something is very wrong. And it keeps getting weirder. The perfect theory. For decades, cosmologists had what they thought was a near-perfect understanding of the universe. It was called Lambda Cold Dark Matter. But everyone just calls it Lambda CDM. And it was beautiful in its simplicity. The story went like this. About 13.8 billion years ago, the universe began with the Big Bang. Everything started as a hot, dense soup of energy and particles. As space expanded and cooled, matter started to clump together under gravity. First came tiny fluctuations in density. Those grew into larger clumps. Those clumps attracted more matter and became even bigger. Over hundreds of millions of years, these clumps became the first stars. Those stars grouped together into the first small galaxies. And those small galaxies merged with other small galaxies to form bigger ones. It was a slow, gradual process, layer by layer, generation by generation, like building a skyscraper one floor at a time. The theory made specific predictions. The first large galaxies shouldn't appear until at least 500 million years after the Big Bang. Before that, there just wasn't enough time for all those mergers to happen, and early galaxies should be simple, mostly hydrogen and helium. Heavy elements like carbon, oxygen and nitrogen would come later, forged in the cores of stars that had to live, die and explode first. Lambda CDM also predicted that if you zoom out far enough, the universe should look smooth and uniform. No matter which direction you look, you should see roughly the same amount of stuff, same density of galaxies, same distribution of matter. This is called the cosmological principle, and it's the foundation of modern cosmology. Without it, we can't make sense of anything we see in the night sky. The theory also made predictions about the expansion of the universe. Space is getting bigger over time, and the rate at which it expands should be measurable and consistent. Lambda CDM gave us the exact numbers we should see. Everything matched. Observations lined up with predictions. The cosmic microwave background, that faint afterglow of the Big Bang, looked exactly like the theory said it should. Galaxy surveys showed the structure we expected. Even the distribution of dark matter seemed to fit the model. Scientists felt confident. Not arrogant, just confident that they'd cracked the basic code of how the cosmos works. Sure, there were some loose ends to tie up, a few numbers to refine, but the big picture seemed settled. Cosmology textbooks were written, models were refined. The Lambda CDM model became the standard picture of reality. And then James Webb launched. And that's when everything started falling apart. The cracks. The James Webb Space Telescope went online in 2022 as the most powerful space observatory ever built. Its mirror is so large and its instruments so sensitive that it can see deeper into space and further back in time than any telescope before it. Scientists were excited to test their theories about the early universe. They were expecting confirmation. Instead, they got chaos. Webb began finding massive galaxies in the very early universe. We're talking about galaxies that formed just 200 to 300 million years after the Big Bang. These aren't small proto-galaxies slowly pulling themselves together. These are huge, bright, mature systems. Some contain billions of stars. They're shining with the light of entire galactic civilizations, and they shouldn't be there. According to Lambda CDM, there simply hasn't been enough time for galaxies this large to form. Remember that slow merger process, the one that takes hundreds of millions of years? These galaxies skipped that entire process and went straight to being giants. But it gets stranger. 
When astronomers analyzed the light from these early galaxies, they found heavy elements – carbon, oxygen, nitrogen – elements that can only be created inside stars and then scattered into space when those stars explode, which means that entire generations of stars had to have already lived and died before these galaxies even formed. It's like opening a time capsule from the year 1800 and finding a smartphone inside. The technology shouldn't exist yet. The building blocks haven't been invented. But there it is. Astronomers kept looking, hoping maybe these were just a few weird outliers. But they kept finding more. Dozens of them, all appearing way too early, all too massive and too mature. The pattern was undeniable. Now, maybe the galaxy formation timeline is just wrong. Maybe the early universe was more efficient at building galaxies than we thought. That would be a big deal, but not a crisis. You adjust the model and move on. Except that's not the only problem. While astronomers were scrambling to explain the impossible galaxies, physicists were dealing with a completely different crisis. The universe can't agree on how fast it's expanding. We've known for nearly a century that space is expanding. Galaxies are moving away from each other as the fabric of the universe stretches. But the question is, how fast? What's the expansion rate? Scientists have two main ways to measure this. Method 1 looks at the early universe, specifically the cosmic microwave background radiation left over from the Big Bang. By studying the patterns in this ancient light, you can calculate how fast the universe should be expanding today. The answer is about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Method 2 looks at the nearby universe. You measure the distances to galaxies and how fast they're moving away from us. This gives you a direct measurement of the expansion rate right now. The answer is about 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Both methods are rock solid. They've been refined and cross-checked countless times. Different teams using different instruments get the same results, and they disagree. The chance that this is just a statistical fluke is less than one in a million. It's like using two different speedometers to measure how fast a car is going and getting two completely different speeds. One says 67, the other says 73. Both instruments work perfectly. Both have been calibrated. Both give consistent readings, but they can't both be right. This is called the Hubble tension, and it's been getting worse, not better, as measurements improve. For years, scientists hoped that better data would resolve the discrepancy. Instead, the gap has widened. The universe is literally giving us contradictory information about itself. And then there's the structure problem. Remember the cosmological principle? The idea that the universe should be smooth and uniform at large scales? Well, it's not. Astronomers keep finding structures that are way too big. Giant walls of galaxies, stretching billions of light years. Massive voids with almost nothing in them. Cosmic rings and arcs that shouldn't be able to form under the laws we've established. One structure called the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall stretches about 10 billion light years across. That's roughly 10% of the entire observable universe. According to Lambda CDM, Structures can't get that big. At distances beyond about a billion light years, everything should blur into a uniform cosmic soup, but it doesn't. The universe is lumpier than physics allows. There's also the Big Ring, a structure about 1.3 billion light years in diameter discovered in 2024, and the Giant Arc, another massive structure over 3 billion light years long. These things keep showing up in galaxy surveys, and every time one is discovered, Cosmologists have to explain why their theory says it shouldn't exist. Some scientists think we might even be living inside one of these impossible structures, a massive bubble called the KBC Void that's about 2 billion light years across with fewer galaxies than there should be. If that's true, then all of our measurements might be skewed by local weirdness, like trying to understand the whole ocean while sitting in a bathtub. And these aren't the only cracks. There's the lithium problem. The Big Bang should have created about three times more lithium than we actually see in old stars. Nobody knows where it went. We've been looking for decades. Dark matter isn't distributed the way the model predicts either. It should pile up sharply at the centers of galaxies, creating dense cores. But instead we find gentle hills. The distribution is all wrong. And dark energy, the mysterious force pushing the universe apart, might be changing over time. 
According to Lambda C D M, it should stay constant. It's supposed to be a property of space itself, unchanging since the Big Bang, but recent galaxy surveys, including one of the largest ever conducted, suggest it's evolving. The strength of dark energy might have been different in the past than it is now. If that's true, it completely overturns our picture of the universe, its past, and its future. One by one, the pillars holding up our cosmic theory are starting to shake. This isn't, oops, we got one number slightly wrong. Multiple fundamental predictions are failing at the same time. The whole model is under pressure, and scientists are asking a question that echoes through the history of astronomy. Neptune or Mercury? Is this a small problem or a fundamental one? To understand what might happen next, it helps to look at history. Because this exact situation has played out before in astronomy, twice, with very different outcomes. Two centuries ago, astronomers noticed something weird about the planet Uranus. Its orbit wasn't following the laws of gravity correctly. It was drifting off course, wobbling in ways that Newton's equations couldn't explain. So scientists made a bold prediction. There must be another planet out there, a dark unseen world whose gravity was tugging on Uranus and messing up its orbit. They did the math, calculated where this mystery planet should be, and pointed their telescopes at that spot. And there it was, Neptune, exactly where the equations said it would be. Problem solved. The laws of gravity were fine. We just hadn't found all the planets yet. That's a Neptune moment. When the theory is correct but incomplete, you're missing a piece of the puzzle, and once you find it, everything clicks into place. But then came Mercury. Its orbit also didn't make sense. Mercury was drifting in ways that Newton's gravity couldn't account for. The innermost planet was moving too fast through its orbit, advancing slightly more than predicted with each pass around the Sun. So astronomers tried the same trick that worked for Uranus. They predicted another planet, even closer to the Sun. They called it Vulcan and spent decades searching for it. Professional astronomers and amateur sky watchers pointed their instruments toward the Sun during eclipses hoping to catch a glimpse of this hidden world. They never found it, because it doesn't exist. The problem wasn't a missing planet. The problem was that Newton's laws of gravity, as brilliant as they were, weren't the complete picture. Gravity needed to be reimagined. And in 1915, Albert Einstein did exactly that with general relativity. Einstein showed that gravity isn't a force pulling objects together. It's the curvature of space-time itself. Massive objects, like the Sun, bend the fabric of space around them, and other objects follow those curves. Near the Sun, where space-time is curved most sharply, this effect is strongest. Under this new understanding, Mercury's orbit made perfect sense. No missing planet required. That's a Mercury moment. When the theory itself is wrong, not incomplete, but fundamentally flawed, you can't patch it. You have to rebuild from the ground up, and when you do, you don't just solve the original problem, you unlock an entirely new understanding of reality. So which moment are we in? Is there a cosmic Neptune hiding somewhere? A missing piece that will make Lambda CDM work again? Or are we facing a cosmic Mercury where the entire framework needs to be replaced? Right now, scientists are split. Some argue that we're in a Neptune moment. Maybe dark matter behaves differently than we thought. Maybe there's a new particle, or force we haven't discovered yet. Maybe the early universe had pockets of higher density that allowed galaxies to form faster, find the right missing piece, and the theory survives. Others think we're staring at a Mercury moment, that Lambda CDM is fundamentally broken, and no amount of tweaking will fix it, that we need new physics to explain what's happening. Something as revolutionary as general relativity was a century ago. The evidence keeps piling up on both sides, and the debate is getting intense. But here's what makes this moment so important. Why this changes everything. This crisis isn't a failure. It's exactly what science is supposed to do. And if history is any guide, we're about to learn something incredible. Science doesn't move in a straight line. It moves in cycles. Long periods of calm where theories get refined and details filled in. And then sudden moments of crisis where nothing makes sense anymore. Observations contradict predictions. The model stops working. Confusion spreads. And that's when the breakthroughs happen. 
because crisis forces scientists to think differently, to question assumptions they've taken for granted, to explore ideas that seemed crazy before. And eventually, a deeper truth emerges, a better understanding that explains not just the new observations, but everything we knew before in a clearer, more complete way. Think about what came from the last big crisis in physics. When Mercury's orbit didn't make sense, and scientists were forced to rethink gravity, they didn't just solve the Mercury problem, they unlocked general relativity. And general relativity gave us black holes, gravitational waves, the expanding universe. It completely transformed how we understand space, time, and reality itself. General relativity also has practical applications we use every day. GPS satellites have to account for relativistic effects, or they'd give you directions that are miles off. The clocks on those satellites tick at a slightly different rate than clocks on Earth because of how gravity warps time. Without Einstein's equations, your phone couldn't tell you where you are. Or think about quantum mechanics. That emerged from a crisis too, when experiments kept producing results that classical physics couldn't explain. Light behaving like both a wave and a particle. Atoms emitting energy in discrete packets. Electrons existing in probability clouds instead of defined orbits. Scientists had to admit that the rules they thought governed reality didn't work at small scales. And quantum mechanics didn't just solve those specific problems. It gave us the entire foundation of modern technology. Computers, lasers, MRI machines, solar panels, transistors, LEDs. The entire digital revolution came from scientists being forced to admit that atoms don't behave the way we thought they did. Crises are how we make the biggest leaps forward. They're uncomfortable and confusing while you're in them, but they're also how progress happens. Because if everything matched our theories perfectly, we'd never learn anything new. We'd just keep confirming what we already believe. The universe is telling us right now that Lambda CDM is incomplete. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe it just needs adjustments. But either way, we're missing something huge. And that means there's something massive waiting to be discovered. This could lead to a new understanding of how galaxies form. Or what dark matter actually is. Or whether dark energy is constant or changing. Or maybe the cosmological principle itself is wrong. And the universe is stranger and more complex than we ever imagined. Maybe the laws of physics worked differently in the early universe. Maybe there are additional dimensions or forces we haven't detected yet. Whatever we find, it's going to be big. Because the universe doesn't misbehave for no reason. When multiple pillars start cracking at the same time, it usually means you're building on the wrong foundation. We're living through a revolution. Right now, in real time. And revolutions in science are the most exciting moments there are. Because that's when we discover that reality is even weirder and more amazing than we thought. The next decade is going to be wild. New telescopes are being built. The extremely large telescope in Chile. The giant Magellan telescope. Better instruments coming online. More data pouring in every month. And with each new observation, we're getting closer to figuring out what's actually going on. James Webb will continue observing for years, pushing even deeper into the early universe. Ground-based surveys will map more galaxies and measure the expansion rate with better precision. Experiments hunting for dark matter particles will either find something or rule out entire categories of candidates. Maybe we'll find our cosmic Neptune, a missing piece that makes everything fit. Maybe we'll need our cosmic Mercury, an entirely new framework that rewrites cosmology from scratch. But one thing is certain, the universe is about to get a lot more interesting. So which do you think it is? Are we just missing a piece? Or do we need to rewrite cosmology from scratch? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, hit that like button and subscribe for more exciting content.